way you start without any existence of oh, mathematics, you start to get out of the place. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you could. I think it's funny. Don't have suggestions. Look at the mountains from the show. I don't know. 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 Inside, I feel. Except on Sundays, I feel. Oh, God. That's like, that's like, that's like, it is enough. Um, but 30 years ago, I yeah. How are you? Good. 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 Now I understand. Hello. Hey, you, Bill. You know Bill. No. I, uh, I, I had that word in uh, Kansas City. Exactly. So I kind of got the lead. So. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jim Fox. Jim. 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 Yeah. Nice to meet you. And Jim and I were in college together. And I don't know that we were in some rooms until you were Yeah, I think we were. Yeah, and then we're, 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 we're in first, Innocent Society. First two years of the program. Yes. the head of the fan club. What is that called? It's the uh, Parents. Parents. <laughs> Any, anyone who is I mean, a fan but is a parent. Yeah. Uh, you have a parent tattooed on your ankle? Yeah. Like a parent head? <laughs> Actually not. I, <laughs> Me neither. I, no tattoos at all. I'm a parent head, but I have no tattoos. I have one tattoo right here. It's where Jim Rogers stabbed me with a pencil in the seventh grade. That's all. Jim Fox. Hi, On the on the email and on the uh, Facebook. Yeah. Good to see you in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it was a long road. road. It was a beautiful road. Coming up, you hear all the colors coming on. And Dave and I are talking. So.
children up there, all adults, finally, and um, my husband is also up there, and he's a retired teacher, and now he's helping me. Um, with me? No. Mm -hmm. I'm Steve Dager. I uh, hung out at Centennial for a few years between 72 and I guess 75. I live in uh, Seattle uh, on the government dole. I've been at the University of Washington for, God, 35 years now, <laughs> uh, in, in different capacities. I, uh, I'm in the uh, departments of radiology and bioengineering, and um, we do kind of really strange brain imaging research. Uh, um, a lot of what I do now is I study brain development, and we look at causes for autism, and uh, we've done a lot of work with different neuropsychiatric disorders, um, and I can't even imagine retiring. And I have a uh, wife who's a pediatric nephrologist in Seattle at Swedish Hospital, and we have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful being back. Uh, I'm Jim Schaefer. This is my wife, Mary Lynn. Uh, I teach in Nebraska Westland. I was in the first class of Centennial College. When Ted Beck was in his uh, leadership, most leadership role, so to speak. He was. Um, our guide, one of our guiding spirits that year. Does he still chew? No. Oh, good work. The son. The son. <laughs> My name is David Ware, and I was in Centennial from 72 through 74. Um, after I left the University of Nebraska in 77, I've been declared a French major two weeks before I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> I have been by turns itinerant musician, oil field trash at several levels, unemployed historian, uh, museum curator, um, father to a now 12-year-old daughter, as well as many Airedales along the way, um, committer of crimes with the ukulele, myself, and, um, and Currently, I'm in my 13th year of a one-year interim fill-in position as historian of the Arkansas State Capitol. <laughs> I'm not counting on anything. 
Thanks. I'm Howard Rosenberg. I was euphemistically referred to as a centennial scholar. <laughs> <laughs> when I went off to join the Navy. Ended up uh, finishing my degree at George Washington University. I've been a journalist my entire adult life. Worked on the Daily Nebraskan as a photographer, some of you might remember that. And uh, now I'm a producer for 60 Minutes. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations, Alex. And Ted. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> 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 a few words when you're that good. Uh, Kirk Hemphill, I uh, dropped out for lack of money. I was centennial, 70 to 72. Uh, came back to the university a couple of times after various blue collar careers. Hired on with Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. I went out for track, built railroads, inspected them, fixed them clean up to relics, et cetera. Found out they were offering junior and senior level classes in psychology back in the 80s. And I said, I'll go back to school. I was a non-traditional student for three years. Lincoln Southeast High School class of 70, UNL class of 91. <laughs> <laughs> I retired from the railroad uh, two years ago this week. And I'm still tired. <laughs> Scott Otley lived on Hepner II, 1972-73, made some of my best friend connections during that period, and wound up marrying the ukulele lady. So. Good taste. Uh, I'm um, James Jimmy Padavina, and my wife Terry is here with me tonight. Um, I was in the Centennial program for the first two years, uh, 69, 70, 70, 71, and uh, remember it with uh, great affection, uh, great time. Uh, really enjoyed the interactions when we would try to figure out how we should live in, in that uh, living unit, and uh, really enjoyed that. Um, it's great to see a lot of the old friends. Um, um, I spent uh, 34 years in the insurance business, retired a couple years ago. Uh, my wife and I are both retired, and uh, we are just really good bums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Peake, and um, you may remember me from, see, I was there from 70 to 72, December of 72. Um, and I went to California, like a lot of people who don't know what to do with themselves, oh. and finished at UCSB. kids, both wonderful boys, and I've been off and on an artist, teacher this whole time, and still fun. So, um, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm Jack Mayfield. Uh, my job is to do whatever David Howlett wants done. <laughs> and I enjoy it, which is a lot. <laughs> Centennial 69, 70, and 70, 71. Also on the second floor, Hefner. My roommate next door was Kirk Donaldson, student assistant who lived or slept on a piece of plywood supported up by, by concrete blocks underneath. And I, that made an impression on me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't just your average place here. And Les Miller down the hall had a coffin in his room. <laughs> Listen to Pro Cole Harem ceaselessly. So I thought this is an interesting place. My mother found out that it was an interesting place also the day she we moved in, and she just kind of you know looking around, and then we see Dan Laidley standing with his back against the wall with a ten-gallon hat on and a little string. You know what are those called? <laughs> just like a cigar store in. Dan <laughs> Laidley. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun here, and it turned out to be a very interesting experience. Um, 
my job is to uh, let me remind you that we're going to have an event tomorrow too, and that is going to be at the Champions Club. I find it ironic that a group that has not a great deal of enthusiasm about Husker football is going to be meeting at a shrine to Husker football that month on a weekend after requesting the weekend when there was no football games. At that but that's where we'll meet that. the uh, Robin West. I have this on a post-it note on my finger here. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to start uh, with registration there. Not, you don't have to go through real registration like you did before. You just uh, get your name tag registration at 11 through 11.30 and then we'll start with lunch and then a program after that. Um, I'm an attorney in Omaha. I work at the Med Center. Um, my wife and I have two grown children and uh, all is good. And I just want to say Jack's done an awful lot to pull this together. I'm Jerry Fetter. I'm here with uh, my wife, Marianne. I was in Centennial in those uh, glorious years of 1969 to 71, which allowed me to be a colleague of Ken Beck's uh, for those years, along with our role in Phil Stripper. Retired from the University of College Department in 2001, and those centennial years are still the uh, the peak of my university experience. Right. And Dad lately is only three blocks away, and he's still wearing that. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think I forgot. I might even know some of you. Um, I was um, Ray Walden. I don't know how many people did a full four years in Centennial. I did, and I lived in the dorm. Okay, there's one. Lived in the dorm the whole time, 70, spring, uh, fall of 73, two, to uh, spring of 76. Uh, Best Project was my very first one, when Ron Kirtenbach from the um, Lincoln Gazette came in recruiting people to work for the, new, you know, the underground newspaper. Learned all about newspaper, he wanted to be a journalist anyway. They let me into regular journalism school, nonetheless. Um, but we stand out, free or donation, passing papers out. Uh, I don't know if Dave Ware is here. Hey. <laughs> Dave taught me to play guitar, uh, at least to do some chords. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, not very well. I never did get to be on that good. Carl Markshausen taught me to use how to play chords on the piano, and I spent the next several decades uh, wow. cool. poking about on the piano until I finally took some lessons um, and got all the way up to the level of being the fifth Sunday um, pianist at my church. Let's see. So, yeah, great memory of the... Years later, went back to, you know, just kind of going through the old Centennial Ground and still saw some upside-down name plaques, you know, the push-pull, um, you know, things. Uh, we had gone through one very late night, uh, unscrewing all these little plaques, turning them over, screwing them back down, and it was at least 20 years later that they, some of them were still upside down, so I accomplished something in that place. Yay. Um, anyway, went on became a lawyer instead of a pianist or anything, and um, great to be here. Yay. Yay. Another gentleman. I'm Ray's friend, uh, Jim Daniels, and I was here uh, from 70 to 73, uh, when uh, I got suspended because of uh, majoring in uh, sex and drugs and wrong to do. My big project, I remember when I was there, was uh, uh, the Impressionistic and the Expressionistic eras uh, in Europe. And uh, I still, I, I, I hope I wasn't uh, copying anybody uh, too much, but I did Starry Starry Night, uh, <laughs> my own painting 
of such. And so, um, that's that's uh, about that's about it. I. Uh, um, I'm, uh, one thing is uh, I've, I've bounced around from place to place, but this hat that I'm wearing is uh, Iowa Western Community College, and I'm trying to get back to school. <laughs> So we got Bill. Your turn. Okay. So what am I supposed to talk about? <laughs> I can tell you my singular memory of being in Centennial in the fall of 1969. Uh, some of you who were there might remember that I was your janitor on Friday nights. And when you vomited in the stairwell, I was <laughs> <laughs> because I desperately needed a job to go to college. And that's my most vivid memory of something. <laughs> um, and, 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 here, and I see Howard is here somewhere. He was. And the other second most vivid memory is Howard Rosenberg singing Bridge Over Troubled Water at 2 o'clock in the morning across the hall. So I, I hope that he can do a rendition for us tonight. <laughs> Those are my vivid memories of 1969 and 70. That's a long time. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about my life. <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there. I think Ted had a few more words to say. I just I realized I didn't talk about myself at all. So but before I do that, you know one thing I you know talk about memories. Nobody, I'm surprised nobody talked about the language labs. <laughs> that always elicits some response from some people. I'm David Howlett. Uh, I live in Denver. Uh, I have a consulting firm in government relations. We have offices in DC and, and Denver. We do a lot of work with government agencies at the federal level and in uh, public nonprofits uh, and public agencies. So, I mean, it's just terrific seeing everybody here. Um, I know it's going to be a fun two days, re uh, reappointing with one another. A lot of good memories. Uh, it's just great to see people like Sarah, my God, and the eons. And, uh, and I just, it's just really great to have everybody together and, and uh, fun to, to remember those great memories. There's a lot of real, really good ones. And Centennial, for me, opened the door to thinking about life differently. And, I'm so thankful for that. I'm a, I'm a small town kid. I graduated from high school in Cook. Um, I wanted to come to the big university, but it was just, I needed some kind of transition in a vehicle to get me into the uh, bigger community. My name's Chris Dewey. I was in Satana College the very first year, and I knew Robert and all of those Scribner and those people. Uh, they're fortunately dead already. And I traveled around the world, and um, I lived out in California for a while, <coughs> and then I took a bicycle trip, and I met my wife, and I came to the city where my mom and dad lived on the farm. And um, I was in New York for a few years, and I was in the military, and then I moved back to Nebraska, and we lived on a farm west of Nebraska City. Um, we have farms and rental properties, and we teach a class, art class, wood carving, to the fifth graders, and to the alternative high school in Nebraska City for the last 15 years. I'm Laurel Bush, also part of the first crop, uh, mentored by Jerry and Ted and Robert and Phil Scribner. Uh, I now live in Helsinki, Finland. It's all Tipex fault. Uh, <laughs> he, helped, he helped write the application, or perhaps even wrote the application. Uh, they got me a, a Fulbright to England. Then I went to, had met somebody in England who was actually from Ottawa, visited Ottawa, met a Finnish diplomat, and ended up in Helsinki. Um, I've been there for 40 years, just retired at the end of July. 
from teaching English and American literature at the University of Helsinki. No social security. <laughs> and, and I cannot move back to America because nobody likes Obamacare. And I, don't, and I don't qualify for social security or medical care. I have excellent uh, coverage in Finland. <laughs> and, and I was lucky enough to move there during the Cold War, uh, when uh, Helsinki was one of the spy capitals. And uh, according to uh, the most recent news, we're moving in that direction again. We uh, share one of the longest land borders with Russia and are quite aware that Vladimir is getting antsy. Uh, but anyway, I'll enjoy, I, I, I'm enjoying meeting all of you again, talking to you. Uh, I'll talk to more of you later. Well, hi. <laughs> you know, it's so nice to see what you and just pleasing to my heart. I used to be Amy Whittington, and then I was Amy Marsh, and now I'm Amy Dalton. And I'm a mother of a grown woman. I am a grandmother to an 18-year-old who is living with me, and she's going to Southeast Community College. I have five cats. She has one. There's some talk of a cat lady running in our jeans. Um, I was in Centennial 69, 70 and met a lot of you then, respected a lot of you from then, had a lot of fun, had to, I couldn't remember Les's name, I remember the, the uh, coffin. They went to the well and got a top hat and a black outfit. They put the coffin and Les in Kent's hearse. Do y'all remember the hearse? Okay, and then they went to local bars and won contests. Yeah, that was fun. Camp Beverage? Camp Beverage, yeah. yeah. Um, it was an experience, and all you spouses, too bad you did get to be there. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> but, but it wasn't the silver coffin that was in the grass room. No. That was Murat's hot pad. No. no, this was wood. It was a wooden cover. And last would go in down and then would sit up and start with the garden. It was a different art. My name is Marcia Stewart and I was in Centennial from 1970 to 73. Education major and I stayed in Lincoln. Never really taught, but always in teaching. I'm in state government right now, not retired yet. Have two grown sons. That's about it. Looking forward to retirement. <laughs> That's good. I'm Nancy Anderson. Um, I was in Centennial from 70, uh, 70 to 73, and now live in Minneapolis. Um, I went to California, became licensed as a marriage and family therapist. I currently do uh, grief counseling for a hospice program in Minneapolis. And I have a 17 year old, no, not 17, 27 year old <laughs> son who's a musician. That's <laughs> quite a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Larry Holder anymore. <laughs> Seventy-six, and they told me I was pronouncing my name wrong, so it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, I live in Aurora, Nebraska, with my wife Dorothy, and I work again for the state. I, know, I work at the Veterans Home in Grand Island. Kind of a glorified <clears throat> shop teacher of sorts. I run the OT wood shop there, which is a really interesting and challenging position, and I'm looking forward to retirement. <laughs> There's a theme here. <laughs> My name is Marjorie Bisbee, and um, I was in Centennial only briefly from 71 to 72, and I have been at the university for the last 25 years in the work in instructional technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> <Is it> me? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Joan, it's waving. <laughs> I'm Peg Blomgren. I was in Centennial in 71, 72, with, and went out to get taught by Jerry in the department. Um, and I went off to Chicago, met a woman from Oregon, uh, who moved me back to Oregon, where I do affordable housing long stuff. And I have no plans to retire. <laughs> and I might point out he successfully argued a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Since I spent a couple of years working in the public sector, and after a crisis of conscience, I moved into the private sector and was a commercial real estate developer um, for over 30 years. Uh, I'm now self employed as a real estate consultant and commercial real estate broker, involved in lots of different um, volunteer things in Minneapolis. Um, I have two wonderful children, um, a son and a daughter, and, um, and I can't tell you how meaningful it is for me to be here. It's, for some reason, this has touched something in me that to make these connections after so long, it's, um, it's for some reason, it's really emotional, so I'm just really happy to see everybody. <laughs> I'm Larry Griffin. Uh, a lot of you might remember my brother Buster or Marlon better than you remember me. Um, Buster was one of the original Centennialites. I came along in the school year of 73, and he's a much more memorable scholar than I was. I'm, I'm not memorable for my academic excellence. Um, I, I was at Centennial in 73, 74, 75. I got a very high draft number in the draft lottery and knew that I didn't have to try and maintain a, a draft <laughs> <laughs> and At that point I decided that maybe I could major in beer. And, <laughs> and after going to the university for eight years I had 82 hours of credit and I decided to drop out and I was breaking up with a girlfriend and I thought that would fix her and I'm not really sure how that was supposed to punish her. <laughs> at the time that's what I thought. And I dropped out, and I dropped in, and I dropped out, and I dropped in. And I'll take anybody on here as far as length of time being triangulated. Um, uh, Kirk said that he graduated like 93. That's a piece of cake. I didn't go to school for that long. I, it took me 30 years to get a four-year degree. And I did it. They sold me a ring to prove that I actually <laughs> I got a bachelor's of fine art in painting. And, uh, and in my lifetime, 
time, I worked for a few years at the newspaper in the mailroom, not as a journalist, and I bartended for a few years, and then for almost 35 years I worked, I was Larry the Cable Guy, and only I was the real Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> he doesn't work for the cable company, his name isn't even Larry. <laughs> Somehow or other, they've switched our paychecks up. <laughs> he gets my paycheck, and I get his paycheck, and I don't know, I want mine back. Um, but uh, about two months ago, apparently I retired because I was downsized at Time Warner. I worked for every cable company in Lincoln, except when it was the phone company. And, and apparently they don't need me anymore. Uh, so I'm, I'm not quite old enough to retire, but apparently I am. And, well, <laughs> except I don't have another 30 years to get a two-year Well, it only takes 15 to get a two-year I, 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 I hear that after Everybody's six helpful. years, is it, they stop counting the credits, so I can't, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just not that smart, I guess. But I, I am a practicing artist. If anybody wants to see or, or perhaps buy my work, <laughs> you can go down to Gallery 9 or just talk to me later and I'll you know, be happy to sell you as much art as I can. <laughs> and, uh, the people that know Buster, uh, apparently he's going to be here tomorrow. So uh, my, my interests outside of the academic world, um, I've never been married, I've never had kids. And I have the third best mustache in the state of Nebraska because I actually won the contest. <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a fifth place finish, a fourth place finish, and two thirds. And next year is my year. I'm going to win. This mustache can go to the bar without me going with it. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it's my turn. Uh, I'm Amy Bamer Watson, and I was in Centennial from 70 to 71. And having listened to everyone's story, I should have stayed a lot longer. <laughs> because all I did with my life was uh, I was a flight attendant for not quite 10 years, during which I got married and had a couple of kids. Went to law school, graduated, never practiced. I'm now a retired mother and a ski bum. Yeah. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite memories uh, of Centennial was the very first day I checked into the dorm, walked into my room that had been assigned, and my roommate was Patty Heiser, and she was in there, and I looked around and said, you know, this room just isn't good enough for us. We're going to have the room next door because it has two windows, which was AJ's room with Maureen. <laughs> and AJ looked at me like, no, you're not going to have the room. <laughs> so Patty and I had the room next to AJ for that whole year, and it was a great time. I have wonderful memories, and uh, life couldn't be better. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Barbara Glenn Griffith. I went to Centennial. I was in Centennial from 71 through 73. Um, so that was a huge influence in my life. Um, I have had jobs working on a ship, working in a zoo. I've done lots of things. Where I've landed is I am now in the St. Louis area. I am the CEO of a non large nonprofit organization that serves people with developmental disabilities, all ages, all services, autism, cerebral palsy, intellectual disabilities. Um, and I have two grown children, two grandkids. My husband is a passionate musician. He knows Dennis very well, um, an amazing musician. Uh, that's not his job, but that's <laughs> what he, his passion is. So, um, but Centennial uh, really was a big influence in my life, and I am very, very glad to be back here. So, good to see everyone. Hi, my name is Carl Markshausen, and the years I was here was uh, 74 and 75. And I now live in Carrollton, Missouri, which is uh, 90 miles east of Kansas City. And I do, I'm a research consultant, but I did a lot of years 
as a teacher aide in the uh, public school system, and my heart's with kids. And, but right now, I'm, I'm uh, connecting uh, family photos to a timeline, and I just, I feel like I'm a super sleuth uh, going through and connecting names and places and all that. And uh, Centennial really was uh, some of the best memories I ever had of UNL. You know, you know and everything else is dross, but I had a great um, uh, classmate, Bob Winkler, who's in Omaha now, but he and I clicked. We did crazy things. We had uh, strips of paper hanging from the ceiling. The best thing was on Friday night, you know, people were roaming the halls, and, and my roommate would go and drag people in. Oh, look at our room. We had cardboard up along the walls that I had uh, dragged some refrigerator boxes up there. And, and well, because they had a rule, you couldn't paint the walls and you couldn't pound into the walls. So if you create an artificial wall, then you can do anything to that wall. But then I thought, is this a fire hazard? Yeah, but they never call us on it. And, uh, oh, we had so much fun. So, uh, my brain's breaking. Okay. <laughs> My name is Shelley Stahl, and I was in Centennial College from 1970 to 1972. Uh, it changed my life. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, thought I graduated in 74, and uh, lived, lived in Chicago for a while. Uh, worked with uh, runaway kids there until I ran away. I came back to Lincoln, and I went to law school, and uh, graduated. And then I went out to North Platte and I was in the public defender's office out there. I lived on Buffalo Hill Avenue and uh, worked on some interesting cases, but my mother sent me an ad. I miss my friends and I miss my family back here. My mom sent me an ad for a job at the university in the student legal services office. And I applied for the job and I got it. I moved back here and I thought, yeah, I'll have this job about a year maybe, and then I'm gonna go out and you know, live in a big city. And, and here it is, 34 years later. <laughs> Remember those slum wars that yeah. used to torture us? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I grew up with fifth and around. <laughs> I also represent people on uh, misdemeanors. We have three lawyers in our office. I represent kids on stuff that some of the people in this room used to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say one more thing. My husband, Greg, and I, we only live about a mile from here. And I'm going to challenge you all to stay up past 9.30. <laughs> 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 Mostly I had been hanging out around Centennial for about a year before that, and I wanted to come there because it was the happening place to be. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I didn't do a whole lot in school while I was there. I was still playing every weekend with my rock band that we'd had since I was 12 years old. And um, of course, thinking uh, at a time when gas was 27 cents a gallon and bread was about the same. And, we were, we were each making about $200 a weekend playing. I thought, well, what are we in college for? You know? <laughs> so at the end of uh, 70, spring 73, I, uh, which this is a real homecoming for me, I, I bought this guitar right here. We're living in Hefner Basement on 72. Uh, I wrote my first solo guitar piece in that room in 1972, um, which ended up being the title song of my album, Day Spring, that I recorded in 1983. So indeed, it's a, a homecoming gig. And I'll tell you, there's never been a better sound than this guitar in those empty hallways down <laughs> And the echo that was incredible. Anyway, um, I was so busy playing with my rock band that last semester that um, despite a, a hard, heavy schedule of modern poetry, History of Jazz, <laughs> Bowling, <laughs> and Centennial. 
I still almost flunked out. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> As it lucked out, my, my last independent project for Centennial, I was uh, able to uh, take credit for the songs I was writing that semester. And I would get my six hours if I did a final concert of those songs in the grass room the last week of school, which I did. So it truly is a homecoming for me here. Um, then I dropped out, then um, as it would be, that band broke up the next month. <laughs> there went my income. But I did manage over the years to, uh, between guitar teaching for 35 years and playing in various bands in clubs and uh, doing my own music, um, make a career out of music in all those years. Interestingly enough, Five months after that concert of those songs in Centennial, uh, at the last minute, the day of, I got to fulfill a childhood dream, which was my agent called me and said, um, the Climax Blues Band has canceled the last minute. Could you open tonight at Pershing Auditorium for Fleetwood Mac and Wish Man? So that was, I, my big time career was peaked right at 20 years old, 3,000 people in that concert, but it was a childhood dream fulfilled, and uh, of course connected the songs I wrote and sent in. So. Are you going to open for them when they come back? What a good question. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I just, uh, and as Larry mentioned, Dave and I have been playing together 35 years. Uh, and uh, played quite a few concerts here on campus back then. Uh, did the uh, album release party two doors down at the uh, crib in the, in the student union. Um, helped a little bit to do that because the UPC uh, teacher that oversaw the union program council just happened to be uh, Mrs. Sarah Bopin, who was our drama teacher at Southeast, and I was one of her favorites, so that helped a little bit. But yeah, we got to play several times uh, here, and then, um, like I said, uh, back in the 19, early 1990s, Dave and I got hired to play both at the at the Oven Restaurant here and at their sister restaurant, uh, the Jaipur in Omaha, which uh, lasted for 25 years until just last year. Uh, unfortunately, with the new big arena, they decided, well, we're getting enough business, we don't need live music anymore and fool with it. So at the end of an era, but it was a great, great long run there. And as it would be six months after that, ended last uh, December, um, and I love Facebook now. I got a Facebook message from a guy in Colorado. He says, I, I picked up a copy of your 1983 album in Denver. Can I post about it? And I said, sure. I had just put up some um, SoundCloud clips of that on, on Facebook. Um, for the 30th anniversary, which was last year. And he did that, and he posted, tagged a bunch of friends, and a friend talked to a friend who was a music writer, talked to a friend, and well, two days later, I got a call from Kyle Fosberg, who owns uh, Grass Top Recording up in Minneapolis, small guitar record company, he said, I'd like to reissue your album, would you be interested? Wow. He said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's coming out on December 1st again, first time in 30 years. I've been sold out a small 300 copy right here in Lincoln. And uh, with plans to also re uh, release the DVD of the uh, public access TV concerts I did here in Lincoln back then. And as I've been promising for 30 years, uh, it appears that maybe Kyle and his engineer from Chicago will be coming down in the spring to finally do the follow-up album. Thank <laughs> you.